Hey guys, um, today's activity is going to be a graphing practice. So I have set it up in something called a Jamboard. It's a Google app that we have access to. It's kind of like using a dry erase board. So I thought that this might be a good way to do graphing. It might not. We might decide this is terrible and it's really hard, but I thought we'd at least give it a shot. So you'll see that there is a board here. Um, this, like I said, is called Jamboard. I'm gonna move myself out of the way, okay? Jamboard, and it's kind of like a dry erase board. And there are actually four different slides here. One, two, three, four. If you click here on this arrow, it will actually show you all four, okay? So what you're gonna do, you can click the arrow here again to close it back up, is semi-simple. It's a little tricky, but it's semi-simple. So it says to label the x-axis temperature. So for example, I already know that the x-axis is this one down here. Hopefully you know that. So I'm gonna create a text box. When I create that text box up here, I can do a couple of different styles of font. I would just start with normal. They can just get bigger and smaller. It's not that fancy, but, um, and then if you want, again, you can change the color. There's not a ton of capabilities in Jamboard, but you don't really need to change the color if you don't want to. So it doesn't really matter. We're gonna leave it black. So then if I click down here, it puts this box in and now I can type in this box and it said, label the X axis temperature, temperature. And so see how I can drag it to make it bigger. First of all, you double click inside it. Uh, and you don't worry about the little degree symbol. We won't worry about that. You can just put Celsius, make sure you put Celsius though. And you can scooch it down below. Ooh, that looks pretty good, right? Okay, so then the next step says label the y-axis breathing rate per minute. So here's where it gets a little tricky. You're gonna do the same thing, text box. You're gonna put it over here, right? But now it's gonna right onto here. So what I would do is first make it big. Say breathing rate <clears throat> per minute. And the cool thing here is this top left corner is gonna let you rotate that. Ooh, pretty cool, right? And then you click and just drag it over. And there we go. We have our lab set up. Or we have our graph set up. Not too shabby, right? So this so far, not so hard. Then you have to figure out, construct a scale on the, on the x-axis. This might be where it gets a little hairy. But we're going to try it and see how we do. So what I would do when I'm doing a scale, you have a couple of other different options over here. And my, my video recorder is getting in the way. So hide cursor, highlight. Oh, I want to highlight clicks. I think I'm already doing that. Okay. So what I would do is we have temperature. Your temperature is gonna go from the lowest to the highest. You wanna stretch your scale as far as you possibly can. So our lowest is 10 and our highest is 27. So we might just say we're gonna go from zero to 30. That's what I would do. Then I would count the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is lovely because it's exactly half of 30. Beautiful. So then I would take my little writing tool. I have a pen up here. There's a couple different types. So you can do a pen, a marker, a highlighter, or a brush. I think we have to probably stick with pen or marker here, but you can play around with it a little bit and see what works. I also think for this, I might ask that you change the color slightly just so that you can see it, okay? So instead of labeling every single line, I'm gonna count by twos every line, but I'm gonna kind of keep one of them empty. So I'm gonna say this one's gonna be two, this one's four, six, eight, 10, 12, that one's gonna be a little tricky, 14, 16, 18, 20, oh, that's a little off, sorry, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. <clears throat> okay, again, these little lines are like extending the grid line so that you know exactly what line your number is going to be on. They don't have to be perfect. If you really don't like it, like this one, I, I really don't like. So I'm going to erase it. This is your erase tool here. Anything you want to use, you just hover over it. If you need to get back to your just arrow, you can get back to that too. So I really don't love that one. So I'm going to try it again, but I don't make any promises. All right, it's not terrible. Okay, I'm going to go back to my little cursor here because I want to, if I can, scooch this down just a smidge. Just gives me a little wiggle room, okay? So then I'm going to go through, and again, this might be a little time consuming, but I think it's good practice. We're going to do, we want to label these little lines that I put in here. So now the label, the box can go right here, 
you can make it much smaller too. For these numbers, I might say instead of normal, I might say caption because it's a little smaller, okay? And you can make it a little smaller. So this one is going to be four, okay? You can even go so far as to duplicate the box. And instead of, whoa, don't rotate it. That's It's a little hard when it's really small. You want this crosshairs thing to get it to move. You can move it over and then, nope, double click inside of it. It might be too small. There we go. Double click inside. You can make that your six. And you can rotate it back if you want to. It doesn't really matter because once you click away from it, the box is going to go away. So look, see? So the box is going to go away. I made the that four a little, or the six a little bigger than the four. If you pull it on the diagonal, it'll make it a little bit bigger, okay? So I think I'm actually going to duplicate that one again. And I'm going to wait for that four, cro four point cross thing and move it where it belongs and then double click inside, erase the four, and that's going to be an eight, right? Four, it's not, these are the wrong numbers, <laughs> sorry. This one should be a, oh, if you mess up like that, you can always click undo and it will come back. This one should be eight, sorry. And this one, eight, 10. And we'll duplicate. And we'll scooch it over here. And so this one, so this line will be 12. So this line is 14. And we'll duplicate. And then this one is 16. So this one here should be 18. Oops. <laughs> Duplicate. If this one's 18, this one's 20, so this one is 22. And we'll duplicate one more time. Move that one over here. And that's another reason why we're going every other line to measure because I just think it will make life a lot easier to do. Uh, as far as entering all these little boxes, okay? So that's how you do that. So then you see when you click away from them, those boxes will stay. You're going to do the same thing for your breathing rate here. So your breathing rate, your highest is a 60. Your lowest is a 15, but I would start at zero. And so then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so 15 is also a multiple of 60, so that helps. Uh, it should be every four boxes let me think is every two boxes is four i gotta think about it nope two four six eight ten it's actually every one box is four should be you guys can figure it out though. i'm gonna let you guys figure that out and you're gonna enter the the you're gonna do the little lines the way i did them you can do them whatever color you want but you may want to do them in something other than black um, and then you can enter the, the numbers. So then you get to the point where you're ready to plot your points. So let's say this would not be correct, but let's just give two, four, and six. These are, again, not correct, but I'm going to, same thing I did with the other one, I'm going to scooch this off as far as I can so that I have room to put my numbers. Um, two. It's even easier if you just click. It doesn't really matter how big the box is. Four. Then you don't have to resize them. It might get a little wonky when you're on the bottom because they'll overlap. But two, four, six. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Okay. So let's say my first point, which is not accurate, but my first point that I have to plot is <clears throat> at a temperature of four and the breathing rate is four. So I'm going to put the plot right here. So normally you would just put a dot, which would be lovely if when I clicked it just showed up as a dot but it doesn't. So I think we're going to try marker just because it's a little bigger. Um, but four and four, I think you're going to be able to do a little X or you can take your, your cursor and do one of these. The other thing that you can do is if you have a tablet, if you have a tablet, you can download, I would download your Google Classroom app because you're going to need that. Um, and log into your school stuff, and you can download the Jamboard app. I'm pretty confident that there's a Jamboard app. In fact, let me look really quick. But I'm pretty sure that there's a Jamboard app. And then you can ta you can probably do this a lot easier because you can do it with your finger. You don't have to do that. But if you have the ability to um, use a tablet, an iPad, an Android, uh, anything you have that is like a touchscreen kind of thing, 
Let's see if there's a Jamboard app. Search. I'm sure there is. Jamboard. Yep, here it is. So it looks just like the, oops, sorry. It looks just like the icon. Um, I don't know what that is. I guess it's a B. I don't really know. But it looks just like this icon here, right there. Okay, so you can download that and same thing, you log in with your school stuff onto the tablet and you might be able to do it a little easier on there. But so as you're plotting points, you, it, that might be the hardest part too. They don't have to be perfect, just to the best of your ability, okay? The other nice thing that you might be able to do is, sticky note, no, 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 is to do your lines in between. So let's say you could always change color to do your lines. So you can go, okay, well, I plotted in blue, I'm gonna do lines in red. Again, no one's expecting you to do these perfectly straight, especially if you're doing them on the computer. So the best you can do is all I want. Um, the most important part of graphing is labeling correctly. So your Y is the one that goes up and down. Your X is the one that goes across the bottom. A couple rules about graphing. No breaks ever. In math, sometimes you see you do like that break thing down here. Don't do that. No breaks in science. Um, the other thing that's important to remember is your numbers have to be evenly spaced and evenly counted. So you can't just kind of jump around. They have to kind of read like a ruler from lowest to highest. And same thing going up the side from lowest to highest. Okay. So it has to go both ways. Um, and then I think those are your major, major things. Of course, as we move through and do a little bit more graphing practice, I'll probably come up with a couple of other things. In each graph, there are four graphs you have to do. In each graph, you're going to see one question over here. So based on the data you have graphed, complete the following sentence in the blue box below. It's not really blue box, it's blue writing. So it says, as temperature increases, breathing rate blank. So you're going to say, does breathing rate increase or decrease? Then you're going to notice on these other pictures, I've left it up to you a little bit more. So you're going to do your graph and then it says, um, state the relationship between time and digestion. So time and digestion. And it's the same kind of thing as you just did on the first one. As time increases, breathing rate does what? Does it increase or decrease? That's how you phrase these sentences. So that's why it says use graph number one to help you set your sentence up if you need to. Number three is the same way, but I, I, you know, I think you're getting the hang of it. So hopefully you can type it in there. And number four is kind of the same way. Okay. Number four is trick. You're going to have two lines. Okay. So keep that in mind. Your temperature will go down here and you'll have to have um, rate on the side and one line will be heart rate and the other line will be breathing rate. Okay. So you'll have two lines. I would use two different colors, which is magical because you can, and then you'll be all good to go. Please reach out if you have questions on this. Please make sure you watch this video. I know that if you're watching the video, you already know that you watch the video. So this is a moot, moot point, but it's important to watch the video because it's going to make your life so much easier. If you have questions, just please feel free to let me know. We'll see you all soon. Hey guys, two quick things I forgot to mention in the last video, so I'm going to merge them all together. Uh, I already erased out all the stuff that I put, or almost all the stuff that I put, but just be careful when you are um, manipulating these things because they are deletable. So if you accidentally deleted it, you might have some issues. If you do accidentally delete something, you ha always have that undo option too. So as long as you catch it before you're so far from the undo, you can't undo the undo anymore. Um, but just be careful as you're working around. All of these things here are, are pasted in just the same way you're going to do your stuff. So um, there's no way for me to really lock it in and still allow you to um, edit it. So just be careful as you're doing it. Okay. Um, good luck. Let me know if you need any help.